Um, end of the road tour. It was just an end of the road. I and again they were trying to do as much as possible to make it as big as possible and sell as many tickets and make as many much money as possible. I just wanted to end. I just wanted to break. And to be honest, what we should have done is said we'll take two years out or a year out or. But I, I do believe that with our various managers, other than Simon, is that they always thought this won't fucking last long. I mean, listen to them. You know, three calls, same old fucking song. It won't last. In fact, a Flapper, who we talked about earlier, about two or three days before he died, was obviously getting tired because he went to Rick and said, it's all over for you two. I said, did he mention Simple Minds as well? He said, it's all over for you two. I don't know what... And it was the worst thing to say to Rick, which wasn't really fair at all, and he knew how to get him in that respect. And I, I, I even had to say to Rick at that point, if it is, it'll, it's not going to... You know, we got to a point. And uh, he kept saying it was all over and it was finished. And how'd I get there? End of the road tour. End of the road tour, yeah. Um, just talking about. The... Yeah, I don't think there was anything particularly spectacular about it. I don't. It was one of those end of the road tours. We did Milton Keynes, Crystal Palace to finish here. God knows what we did through Europe, but I remember going to uh, Ireland and Pat Egan, who was Elizabeth's brother-in-law, my it would have been my my wife, I suppose, and. Um, he had everything printed up. It's Pat Egan. Oh, Irish, remember now. Well, it's the end of the end of the world tour. I said, Pat, no, fuck it, Pat. It's the end of the road tour. He said, it's the end of the world for some people. Oh, fair enough. So I sort of left it at that. And um, he had this great story. He'd been. He always wanted to build this this place in Dublin, which he eventually built. And he, he had it's a bit of Gemini. Let me. He had this fixation. He wanted double tennis courts, and all the thing. He didn't play tennis, he just had this, I've got to have it. And he, and he, his day was, he was really looking forward to the day it was finished because he'd go to town and buy all the stuff for his tennis court. And he came back, he was giggling as he came in, he came in with Kevin Keegan tennis rackets. He said, nobody on, on the planet is ever going to buy a Kevin Keegan tennis racket except in fucking Ireland. And they were on sale. And uh, another story about the Irish, we were out, the, out there and our production manager at the time. Sorry, Mike. Was um, there was a problem? Some of the gaffer hadn't turned up before you went over, so they get the Irish run the lad in the day there to run it. You should come in. He said, "I need you to go to town and get um, twenty gaffer take twenty rolls." So off he fucking went. You know, it was hours, and he came back with twenty gazza tape. Gazza had apparently made a, and he came in in production with twenty gazza tapes. What the fucking? Hell? Anyway, where are we up to?